Hey guys, I'm Certified Strength and Conditioning Specialist Josh Hankin along with uh, Physical Therapist Jessica Bento. What we're going to do today is look at the unique attributes that both kettlebells and sandbags allow for in your training. Unfortunately, most people simply use these tools to replicate barbell-like training and not appreciating what they bring to the table as far as some unique training variables. So we're going to break them down for you and show you how you can implement them together. So the first thing we're going to do is look at overhead pressing. And the way I want you to sort of tra uh, transfer the way you see overhead pressing is if we look at a plank. If we take a plank and then how do we make it more difficult? We go up to a push-up position. How do we make it more difficult? We start to walk our arms up. If we were to do that infinitely, we'd basically get the load overhead. Instead of having the ground create, uh, or gravity create uh, anti-flexion forces, we're gonna have the load create anti-flexion forces. So really, in essence, an overhead press is a full body lift. So we gotta get out of the idea that we're using our shoulder. So first we're gonna look at what the kettlebell allows for and why it can be used as sort of a really unique tool in our training. So when Jessica goes ahead and starts, she's gonna bring the kettlebell into the rack position. Now I like to begin a lot of people with a one arm press. Now a lot of people will push press, they'll push jerk. To me, that's the difference of starting people, teaching them how to do a push up and doing things like plyo push ups. You have to earn the progression. So with the press, she's gonna lock the legs, she's gonna create stability from the ground up, and she's gonna press the weight so that it's even with her crown, the arm is in line with her ear, and she's gonna actively pull the lat down. Now that doesn't look like a lot just from that, but let's go over what she's achieving out of it. Number one, when she presses with a unilateral load, she's getting what we call asymmetrical lifting. Uh, spinal specialists like Dr. Stuart McGill talk about asymmetrical loading being one of the most powerful things that you can do for fitness and athletes. So when she goes ahead and applies the weight overhead, the other side is counterbalancing her. So she's really looking to look symmetrical as she presses the weight overhead. A lot of people get fixated upon lifting you know, specific loads. So what they'll do is they'll start to lean to one side as they press up overhead to counterbalance themselves. Now, that's not necessarily wrong, but what we lose is basically that stability upon the lateral side. So while we have to really understand what we're trying to achieve. So when Jessica just simply presses overhead, we're looking not only does she press directly overhead, but does she not rotate her hips? Does she not lean to one side? Does she not have what we call leakage of strength? Now, the way we can progress this and what the kettlebell allows us for it, obviously, is introducing a second kettlebell. So what we're going to do is have Jessica do an alternating press in a moment. So I'm going to have her bring the kettlebell down for a moment. It's a good thing to demo with lighter kettlebells. We'll bring the second kettlebell into play. Now she's going to bring both bells up into the rack position. Now what I'm going to have to do is press the right arm up above the head. Now right now what we're doing is getting that asymmetrical loading, but now we're getting load pressing down upon her opposing side. So as she starts to pull this side down, I want her to press this arm up. So now we're actually really finding that lateral flexion and rotation of the body. So we can use an alternating press. Nice, Jess. Then finally we can bring arms both that back to the rack position and we're gonna add a pivot to basically a seesaw press. So she's gonna press to one side, pull down, and then the other side. So what we're getting with the seesaw press is we're introducing transverse plane motion, but we're also doing is teaching her how to apply force from the ground up, locking the glute, and we're making sure she's bracing the abdominals. A lot of people will move through their lumbar spine to produce this movement. And relax. So really what we're looking for is getting a lot of multi-planar training out of you know, the kettlebell press, also looking to build really great stability from the ground to the hips, to the trunk, all the way transferring up to the upper, upper body. So in a minute, we're gonna look at some of the similar variables done in a different way with the sandbag. All right, guys, now we're gonna look at how the sandbag press sort of gives us some different training uh, aspects that the kettlebell did, but also can enhance what the kettlebell did, take us to another level. Now, a mistake a lot of people make with sandbags is they wanna press from the outside. So if I grab onto the sandbag here and I press from here, that unstable environment really doesn't impact me. What happens is just the weight drops down towards the middle or the center of the load is right through normally what I'd have with a barbell. Really what I want to do is get the sandbag upon an unstable position because the whole benefit of using a sandbag is the fact that it's not going to give you perfect loading from side to side and it's going to move slightly as you perform the press. So I'm going to have Jessica here show you a standard clean and press. So we'll just have her get in the clean position first. Good. Now see how the load is upon her fist. So now what this does is allows us to also keep the load where the hand and the, el and the shoulder are close together, making it, allowing her to use the lat. Now, when you ever have cleaned a sandbag, you know the weight is not 50-50. So we're gonna have slight bits of asymmetrical loading through this motion. And you can tell when people begin to press over the crown of their head, that usually they'll waver a little bit through their torso. You'll see this little sort of back and forth wiggle going. So you really wanna lock in like that one arm a kettlebell press when you press overhead with the sandbag. 
Nice, Jess. Now, with a sandbag, similar to a kettlebell, we're not gonna do incremental loading. So what we're gonna do is really try to enhance the instability of the sandbag by moving her body position, what we call the military press. A military press, people a lot of times think it's a shoulder press. It actually means feet together. So what we'll do is after she cleans the sandbag, she'll move her feet together to reduce her base of support, increasing the amount of stability she's having to create from her body. So let's go ahead and see that, Jessica. So after she cleans, put the feet together, now lock in. So now I'm really watching her from moving front and back and side to side. So I'm really watching her, making sure that she presses through the lats, keeps the torso tight, remember that plank example I was giving, and performing the movement perfectly. The last example we're gonna give is basically changing the orientation of the sandbag. That's really, besides the instability of the sandbag, the fact that it has dimensional load and the ability to be rotated allows us more options. So what Jessica's gonna do in a moment, she's gonna shoulder a smaller sandbag here. Now what I'm gonna do is have her come down to a half kneeling position. So I'm gonna alter both the orientation of the sandbag and the body position she's using. So we're gonna go down to half kneeling. So in half kneeling, what we're gonna have is the asymmetrical load again. And now what we're gonna do is call the arc press. So now what I'm watching for is I don't wanna see her move her hips side to side or her torso or front and back. She's got really driving with both legs so she uses the glutes and she's coming up and over. The arc press is a one arm exercise like we saw in that kettlebell press. But what's unique, instead of having the, the center of mass just go straight up and down when she presses, it's going in a horizontal position too. So we're getting frontal plane loading in this pressing movement. Nice job, Jess and we'll come on up. So when you combine these methodologies and you understand what these implements allow for, you can then make a better decision upon the right methods and the right implements to use for your training goals. All right guys, now we're gonna look at a couple of squatting examples with both kettlebells and sandbags. Unfortunately, again, a lot of people just sort of see these as dumbed down barbell versions, but they allow us for some really great uh, training. First, we're gonna start with actually a, a double kettlebell rack position here. So what you wanna think about is that the, even though it's called a front uh, squat with the kettlebells. It's not really a front squat because really in a front squat with a barbell what happens is that the weights are really based upon the frame of your body. That's why you can remove your arms and the load can still remain in place. With a kettlebell and the sandbags as you see the load is going to be much closer and much lower to the body. It's going to be much more lower in the sandbag but right here it's going to be in that rack position so we're going to have a lot more anti-flexion forces. So that's one reason that people can never you know kettlebell front squat anything close to what they could do with a barbell. So you're going to have some some difference there. So so let's go ahead and clean both of these bells up, Jess. Now, when Jessica squats, what we're looking for is the lateral force that this is creating. A lot of people, when they go down to squat, they sort of chicken wing their arms. You really want to lock into your ribs and keep them close. So let's do a couple squats here, Jess. Nice. And now for women, obviously, you're going to be a little bit wider than men, but you never want to really come out and support the bells upon your shoulder. You're not trying to create a barbell. Secondly is that as she does so, you're really making sure you're getting a lot of these lateral forces from side to side. We can expound that, and actually what I like to do when people get pretty good at the kettlebell front squat is go one arm. So let's come down with the bells, Jess. Now, what you find is that you can never, you know, the asymmetrical loading upon the one arm is much more challenging than double. For example, it's much harder for people to, let's say, one arm front squat a 70 pound kettlebell than it is to do two kettlebells at 35 pounds. So that asymmetrical loading is really powerful. So Jessica just goes ahead and racks one. Now what you're gonna watch for is you're gonna watch for any hip rotation or deviation. So as she comes down, you're watching, usually it's the opposing hip to drop away. So you really wanna make sure she's nice and symmetrical with this position. So for me, I like to advance people by going one arm rather than just continuing to add more and more load in the two arm position. So in a moment, we're going to look at the sandbag and how it relates to these same principles in a little different way. All right, now with the sandbag, we're going to use that front hold position. Now, we're going to cover this first because it's a little different than the kettlebell rack. People think that it's one and the same. The difference is that kettlebells pull you more laterally. Here, the sandbag is going to pull you more anterior. So you're going to get a little bit more stress upon the trunk and anti-flexion type of drills. There's a couple of key mistakes that people make with this drill, though. So just going to begin by cleaning the, the sandbag up. Now, the biggest mistake that, or there's two actually mistakes that people do. One is they try to replicate a barbell, so they have elbows up. And because the weight of the sandbag is not resting in the same position as you would with a barbell, what we're finding is that your shoulders fatigue before you can actually get any type of training upon your legs. Remember, in the barbell, your, your frame is absorbing the weight. Here, it's much more anterior to the body, so you really have to work on actively pulling it in towards the body and keeping it lower, which brings us to our second point. When people squat in this front load position, a lot of times they'll start as a fatigue, allow the elbows to open up. Just allow the elbows to open. And all of a sudden now it's pulling them and really what they're fighting is a lot of elbow flexion 
rather than actually supporting the weight appropriately. So you really want key in here. So now when she performs the squat, she's actively pulling in towards her body the entire time, activating the strong posterior muscles in the upper back and the low back to really help her keep it in extension. Let's come on down, Jess. Now, again, just like in the press, we can change the orientation of the sandbag. One of those exercises that people do and they do it incredibly wrong is shouldering. So shouldering is different than the one arm rack and the one arm rack is a great progressive drill to shouldering. The difference is that when the sh shouldering, the weight's resting upon the frame, immediately compromising your postural integrity. So that really, you have to make sure that people can tolerate the weight. So let's see in action. If Jessica turns the, the bag here, she shoulders up to one side. So as soon as she shoulders it, I'm immediately looking for keeping her hips even. So I don't allow her move until she, her hips look in alignment. I don't want to see any rotation or deviation from one side to the other. Now here's the challenge. As her coach, I can stand behind her usually is what we cue people. She's going to perform a squat and I'm going to see, can she keep a symmetrical alignment during the motion? A lot of times as people squat, especially with load upon their frame like this, they start to shift and move, rotate their hips and so get out of good position, ending up with a bad low back or compromising the knee integrity as well. So really you want to make sure that while this is a powerful exercise that people are, can do it well and that you can ultimately get the benefits you're looking for.